Welcome to Nonprofit Nerd Impact Unleashed. Get ready to dive into the world of nonprofits, where the nerdy passion and unstoppable dedication of those making a real impact is celebrated. Together with your host, Jarrett Ransom, the inspiring stories and game changing strategies of nonprofit leaders will be explored. Join us to unravel the mysteries of successful fundraising, uncover the secrets to effective advocacy, and nerd out over innovative approaches to solving social challenges. Nonprofit Nerd Impact Unleashed is your go to podcast for no nonsense discussions with real life superheroes of the nonprofit sector. Get ready to unleash your inner nerdiness and discover or rediscover how to change the world together. Now let's dive in and embrace the power of our nerdy side. Welcome back, friends and fellow nonprofit nerds. Today's guest is Faith Martin with Fundraising Academy at National University. Faith shares her appreciation for the work wellness culture her supervisor has created and the team embodies. She also opens up with some personal go-to resources she reaches for when feeling overwhelmed and needing to take a break. When I first met Faith, she commented that her social battery needed to be recharged, and I was in awe of her awareness and her ability to advocate for what she needed. I hope you enjoy listening to what Faith shares as much as I did and that you are able to find some additional tools, tips, and tricks to help you find a better blend of work and life. Thank you to this season's sponsors, Fundraising Academy at National University, where today's guest joins us from, as well as Nonprofits HQ and Chazen and Company. Well, hey there, Faith. I am so thrilled to have you here today uh, joining me as a guest for this episode. Welcome. Oh my gosh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Well, I'm thrilled. You know, National University has been uh, loyal supporters of my work and really helped to encourage these conversations to go far and wide in so many nonprofit nerds' ears right across the nation. So thank you for being a representative there. I like to start out and really ask the question, which is a little different, right? Because I feel like anytime we go to a meeting, anytime we show up in presentation, anytime we're there to represent an organization, it's like, well, who are you and what do you do, right? So I really like to start off similar question, but a twist is tell me about the names that you go by and I don't know, maybe some of the hats you wear in the world. Of course. Yeah. So obviously Faith, I have some nicknames, but we won't go too deep into those. (laughs) We like nicknames. Yeah. My friends, a long story, call me Faith. It's, it's a, it's inside joke. It's weird, but other names I go by are, um, sister, daughter. Um, I'm a dog mom. She's in the other room right now. Um, colleague, you know, friend, um, neighbor and program manager. So yeah, that's my role here at NU. I love it. And I love when the dogs get brought into the conversation. My guest, um, recently just shared about her dog, Max, and I shared about my dog, Lizzie. So now we need to know your dog's name, Faith. (laughs) Yes, of course. So her name's Indy. Um, when I get a little upset with her, I call her Indiana Jones. Um, so she also has multiple names. (laughs) Love um, that. Very sweet. She's a Sharpe mix. Um, and so she's tiny. She's one and one month. Yeah, she just turned a year. So she, oh, that's fantastic. A little ball of I energy. Love I love her so much. And I say dog mom because she's a lot of work. So I have to add that in. <laughs> She's a lot of work. Well, and it it takes me and I'm going completely off script and off our questions, but uh, you and Indy did a road trip and I was very envious of that because that is definitely a way that I want to live my life. I just want to jump in the car with my dog and just go, <laughs> right? I mean, my laptop will likely be in the seat with me. Um, but yeah, you and Indy have gotten to do some road tripping. Yes, that's one thing. She loves the car, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and so, yeah, six and a half hours from Portland to Idaho, we we drove all the way. 
And she loves it. She just chills back there. She stares out the window and it's the sweetest thing. <laughs> it's so funny to just watch a dog enjoy, you know, a little trip. But she yeah. originally came from Oklahoma. So I think that trained her well from coming from Oklahoma to Oregon. So she's a little- Oh, old. absolutely. But- I love that. Well, any additional, um, I don't know, I'm just going to jump to, you know, some additional questions about like any more road trips in your future for you and Indy? Is that something that you like to do when maybe stress gets high or work gets hard and deadlines get overwhelming? Is that one of the things that you tend to gravitate towards? Well, yeah, I love road trips just on their own are very calming to me. I think I forgot that um, when I moved to Portland, but I'm making the move back to San Diego. So that's going to be one big road trip coming up soon. Um, And so, yeah, I I love like being able to put on a podcast and like, or an audio book and just having that time to like, kind of be out in nature, but also, you know, you're, you're headed somewhere exciting. So Definitely. That's definitely something that I enjoy doing. And I'm glad that she's so comfortable because that would definitely, you know, hinder the ability to do that if she was very stressed all the time. So grateful for that. Yeah. I think you and I are kindred spirits because I too really like uh, to put on a podcast or listen to an audio book. I call it my cathartic time, right? Because I'm in the car. <laughs> it's very, very cathartic. But I'm like, this is very cathartic. And I obviously put my phone down, right, while I'm driving and just get to be present, present with where I am, present with what I'm listening to, obviously paying attention to my pup Lizzie that's in the back, similar to your indie. Um, So yeah, I love that that's something that you gravitate towards because you wear a lot of hats, right? And I've seen you in action. I've seen you manage a team. I've seen you manage conferences and large events. And um, dare I even say like, oh my gosh, we have an issue and no one else should know about it except for anyone else, you know, that's behind the scenes kind of a thing. So talk to me about the hats that you wear, Faith, and what those look like. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I was just having a conversation with a colleague yesterday and she mentioned how program management is you're a generalist. And so being a generalist, you, it literally lays out that you're going to be jumping into all these different areas, wearing all these different hats. Um, so yeah, some of my hats are, you know, managing partnerships, like you said, really leading a team around projects, um, creating, you know, project deliverables, working in marketing, you know, over there. Um, Customer service is, you know, relationship management is such a big part too of, you know, my role here. Um, And yeah, all all of the problem solving in between, (laughs) like you mentioned, you know, in event management, things come up and, um, you know, you have to jump in and be ready with a solution. And that can involve so many different skills and kind of hats that you have to pull from as well. Um, so definitely wear a lot of hats, so many that sometimes I don't, I can't even name it. <laughs> of course. But. Yeah. And I think it's the nail on the head, a generalist. And I, I relate to that so much. Um, in many of the roles that I serve, I feel like, you know, um, the jack of all trades, right? The Jane yeah. of all trades, really. And so having that generalist experience, you're juggling a lot, right? So you mentioned the hats, you're really juggling um, so many things. When you notice there's too much on your plate, there's too many balls in the air, right? Like I might drop a ball or one of these plates are going to come crashing down. Do you notice that? Like, is that something that comes up to you through awareness? Um, Maybe a colleague brings that up to you. How do you find yourself really in a place where you're like, you know what? I need to jump in the car. I need to listen to an audiobook, and, you know, Indy and I need to hit the road. What does that look like? Ooh, it's, I feel like I come to those moments in different ways. So like a colleague can ask, like even just you like saying, how are you doing? How's it going? And then it's like, okay, let me take a step back and not give the superficial answer. You've taught me this well. And how am I feeling? What is on my plate? Um, and Usually when I share that, this team is so amazing that they're like, drop everything. How can we help you? Like, it's truly the attitude. 
Um, and so that has been so amazing to really take the time, take a pause. It's like, yes, we have all these programs going on, all these projects, but what can, how can we jump in now and really delegate tasks that need to be delegated? And then also just outside of kind of talking to colleagues, if I'm working on a project or a program and I'm just feeling like that kind of frustration or kind of like stuckness within my own body or my brain or in, and or having trouble focusing, I know that I need to take a moment and kind of assess where I am um, and then think what, what could help me in this moment? You know, is it just sitting on the couch for five minutes and like petting my dog or is it going on a walk, you know, um, taking her out? Um, or is it talking with somebody, you know, to really, you know, work through the issue then? Usually I'm the type of person when I, you know, am feeling frustrated or, or needing, you know, some support, I need to kind of process it. So it's usually a pause and then I can come back and readdress um, with a more clear mind of how I want to, you know, show up in that moment. So, yeah. yeah. And when you say process, are you more of an internal processor? Yes, definitely am. I got to think through all the yeah. scenarios in my brain first and then, and yeah. then share them for sure. How so I'm you? the opposite. Oh, okay. totally opposite, right. So I feel that I am a verbal processor, um, mostly with my husband, even though it has to do with work, right. It's just like, it's a safe sounding board, neutral, you know, um, point of view He's very grounding for me. I am very much type A extrovert, um, break the glass ceiling, you know, find, find another glass ceiling and break that one. And he is totally the yin to my yang. He's very calm. He's very soft-spoken. Uh, he's very patient, which is nice <laughs> for me to have. Um, and he often will just like, as I am verbal processing, but he's the internal processor, right? So we have that dynamic in our relationship. Um, he very often will just come back with a one sentence that says, it's going to be okay. You've been through this before. And I'm just like, you know, you're right. <laughs> It's just that reminder of, you know, yeah, I, I have, and that is great um, awareness for me to know that this is not unique. This is something that I have come out the other side successfully and maybe even better for, you know, previously. So I love learning though, Faith, from different personalities, because I'm also going to guess you're an introvert. Is that a good yeah. guess? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, of course, am the opposite, right? Very extroverted. And what I love, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this, is I remember the first time we met in person, we were at an AFP conference. We were riding the bus back to the hotel. And I loved this about you, Faith, because you said, I just need to go to my room and have some me time, right? And I yeah. was like, amazed that you had, again, that keen sense of awareness. You knew that technique or tool that you needed to tap into to take care of yourself. So you've already shared so many, you know, ways that you go to, I don't know, maybe that self-care, you know, like what are the things that you do, whether it's sit down for five minutes, take a breath, pet your dog, go for a walk, talk with a friend, uh, whatever that might be. Are, are there any like project management tools that you also lean into. And I know that's completely different than just like being aware about how we're feeling in this overwhelm burnout, kind of a culture that our sector has created, but are there any, again, like those tools that you go to that maybe you could share with our listeners that have helped you? Yeah, definitely. I think a core, you know, project management tool, which is very obvious, but I think sometimes it's underutilized, definitely for me in previous roles, is my calendar. <laughs> like having it on the calendar, whether it's professional or personal, it's just, it. yeah, it'll fall off. It'll, that project, that task, that meeting, if it's not there, um, it'll just, you know, fall away. You'll forget about it. So a calendar is a big thing that's, that's helped me. Note-taking, that's obvious too, right? But also personally too, you know, if I'm, you know, have a list of things to do at home or, or things I want to take care of or upcoming, I take out my notes app, 
I even do that for work. I'll be laying down in bed and like thinking like, okay, tomorrow we have this program, these things going on. And like, um, what needs to be done in the morning, specifically, you know, priority, I'll take it, you know, use my phone to do that. And then I also of course have a one note that I use religiously. Um, and yeah. then just the various like word and spreadsheets are really kind of my core documents to brainstorm and lay out tasks. I use Asana for project management as well and Microsoft project and, and tasks. So those can really be helpful too, when it comes to work. Um, those are and so it's kind of a mix, definitely a mix of all the things that yeah. help everything, you know, stay in order. <laughs> yeah. Those are great tools. I have not taken on Asana. Um, okay. I have, I use Slack with some of my clients and the work that, you know, we do together. I am so grateful for live documents and shared documents, which you often start, right? Like you'll say, here's a webinar that maybe I'm a part of and you'll share that. And then it's like the whole group can collaborate on that live document, which is so amazing. I can't believe that that didn't exist at one point in our career, right? But now it does really looking at that. You know, when you, when you think of overwhelm or you think of hitting that threshold of burnout, what are some of the things that you go to? Um, you know, do you think, oh, I need to go grab a boba, which for all of you listening is a little bit of an inside story uh, because the fundraising academy at National University team, we all went to get boba. Uh, during a conference. And I was like, nope, this is not my jam. But I just, you know, outed myself to faith and said, okay, I actually do like it. But I found the different boba pearls that, that I prefer. So again, I digress. But you know, when you feel that overwhelm, that burnout kind of lurking, do you say, hey, I need to take a break? Like, do you take a long weekend? Do you schedule a vacation? Which Le leads me like when is your next vacation do you have one on the calendar <laughs> yeah I think well it's funny too dear I just love that you were willing uh, back to the boba story or open enough to try it again and try something new and know yourself enough to know you're not gonna like the tapioca but the popping boba might be for you um yeah overwhelm just like you said I think having something on the calendar upcoming that's like oh okay I'm going to get, you know, concentrated couple of days where I know that I can really, you know, relax and just have that time to like move my brain into a different space. It's so helpful. Um, I think, you know, right now, just my upcoming, you know, trip to San Diego is going to be really nice to reconnect with family and, and friends and see my people. Um, but I actually just took a vacation too. I went to uh, Boston for the first time. Um, and Rochester, New York, which it was my cousin's wedding. So we had a really great time. I loved Boston. Um, and it, it just gave me that, you know, that time to, to relax my brain. And also I feel like when you step away, you know, from, from work or you're just your routine, um, you kind of get more space to be creative, at least for me, it gives me that it gives me that internal processing time to rethink even the projects that are kind of ongoing in my work um, and kind of see things through a new lens when you're experiencing new things, trying new things in a different place. So I definitely, yeah, definitely love some set aside vacation time or even just a day, you know, to have to yourself and really, you know, take a break. Yeah. And, and I'm thrilled to hear you love Boston. I went a couple of summers back. I took my son and, uh, we drove up, uh, to like Acadia National Park. And we really just got to see a lot of a lot of that area, which it's not familiar to me. But I want to go back because I kind of talked in circles and that was on me. So my bad. But we ta I talked in circles and then asked about like your next vacation. So I'm really curious because I see the culture at NU with Fundraising Academy is very collaborative, very empowering, very supportive. Um, and so you kind of alluded that maybe you'll take a day here and there, you know, to, to pause and, and reconnect. How has that culture really been um, built or supported, you know, within the team there, maybe your supervisor or just the culture at large? Because you, the, the thing that I love about Fundraising Academy is 
the whole purpose is to educate, inspire, you know, connect with nonprofit leaders across the globe. So you're probably seeing this in a lot of people in that generalist role that you're serving. So how does that show up when you're just like, okay, I can't plan a vacation, but maybe I need to take an afternoon off, or maybe I need to take a day off. Like, what does that, how does that show up for you? Yeah, I think our team is really supportive of that. Just we care about each other, you know, not just as colleagues, but as people and flexibility is so important to our culture, um, at the Academy than at fundraising Academy. And so I feel like our leadership and, and our director at fundraising Academy has really led the charge in building that culture and saying like, you know, that you show up as your full self, you know, whole, whole, you know, self at NU, um, you bring your whole self to work. And if you're not taking care of yourself, then you're not showing up your best, you know, every day in your work. So there's that we have like a really a good check in culture. So, you know, we have a lot of meetings. We're very meeting heavy. And within that, it's taking we have this um, time at the top of our team meetings called wellness check in. So just asking each other how you're doing, you know, and and being real and honest and kind of creating a safe like space to be authentic and, and share where you're at as a person and in your work. Um, and so, yeah, that, that really lends itself to like, Hey, if you're sick, take the time, you know, and often at nonprofits, it's, you're really, you know, pushing through and, and being sick and, or, or tired or burnt out. And, and that just leads to, you know, you know, not feeling your best. And, um, so we really support, that idea of, of self-care, you know, on our team. And I am grateful, you know, that our leadership does that. Yeah. I love that wellness check-in that to me is so mindful, like really starting the meeting and not just starting it with a question, but being sincerely genuine with that question, sincerely genuine with asking the team and creating the space of safety and support. Because I can only imagine what that's like to go around, I'm assuming like a virtual Zoom room or, you know, wherever you guys are meeting, um, having that, because for me, I would be listening as, okay, in this reciprocity kind of a circle, what how is faith feeling and how might I be able to help and support because same thing is happening with all of the teammates there. Um, that is fascinating. Now, is that new, is that a new experience for you here with national university or have you faith experienced that with other positions in your career? I think it's new in that it's intentional. I think, you know, at other positions, you, you have a caring team and you ask how each other are doing when you're, you know, you're, you're sharing space. But I think that our team is very intentional about the way that we almost like embed it into the structure of our meetings. And so just, yeah, just like that wellness check-in, we also have like an area of our meetings that support needs. So really going around and saying like, how can anyone help? And, 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 allowing folks to volunteer if they have more bandwidth. And that's another thing that we often say, you know, what's, you know, not just asking or making a request of somebody to work on a project, but do you have the bandwidth to work on this project right now and allowing them to say no or, or, or allowing them to say, Hey, I need more time. So it's also in the language that we use internally, which is really great. That is so fascinating. And I, I believe uh, there was a calm room at the Cultivate Conference. And so this really, this wellness and this self-care really like weaves a, a fiber, if you will, throughout, as you said, the culture of National University. And I just, I love seeing this more and more in conferences, um, you know, having a calm room or having a place where people can go and just decompress, maybe those introverts of the world, right, can just kind of take a little quiet corner. Maybe they don't want to talk to me 24 seven at a conference because it's just too much. Um, but really finding those opportunities. Um, so I, I kind of want to flip that on you, Faith, like, do you see that becoming more and more the norm at other conferences that you attend? Because you 
I think it's amazing, but you get to go to quite a bit of, you know, events and conferences and uh, you're really dialed in, which I just admire, but are you seeing that to be the norm with other conferences or no? I definitely think so. I think, I don't know if it's really just post 2020 that, you know, we're reflecting on the structure of events and conferences and, and how we can rethink places to be more inclusive and really bring more people in. So I definitely have seen that. And I love seeing the unique creative ways that, you know, that everyone is implementing new ideas. So yeah, our, our calm room was called the relaxation station. Um, And we wanted to just use it as a, a space for people to you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed to, to go use, or if you want to, you know, quietly work that you can utilize that as well. So just creating more dynamic, um, events and, and spaces that are opening up, um, professional development and opportunities to connect more people, you know, who maybe, you know, would usually feel excluded. So, I definitely would say yes. And I'm, I'm hoping to see that more, you know, continue to grow, you know, in our sector moving forward for sure. I How about so you? Too. I know that you, you do the same. <laughs> I see you world traveler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I hope to see more of that as well because you know I outed myself as an extrovert, which for many of you that are listening and know me, you're like, well, duh, obviously, Jarrett, you are an extrovert. Uh, not a big surprise. But what I am finding post 2020, Faith, is that I am loving more and more of my quiet time. Right. So I do feel that that pendulum of mine is going more to that introvert or at least finding a nice balance between the two. Um, I was just speaking with another guest, you know, on the the conversation of the same topic about how I really covet my weekends. And um, fortunately, unfortunately, maybe I, I co-parent. And so I, I say that because um, my son is gone 50% of the time and I have him 50% of the time. But on those times that he's gone, right, like we still have our check-in calls, we still have those connections, but I get to just completely decompress, right? Whether it's going for a hike, I live in Arizona, so it's really super hot right now, Um, but getting on the river, going kayaking with friends, seeing the wild horses, like just having these moments. And sometimes they feel like a blip on the radar, but in that moment, it feels like a lifetime, right? It feels like that time in a kayak, floating down the river, or simply doing nothing and just sitting on the couch, binge watching mindless, you know, television or different series. It's just, it feels like sometimes time stands still. And I am loving those times more and more. So yeah. And I do hope that we, thank you. Yeah. It's new. I I think I'm beyond trying it on. I think it is, um, becoming more and more a part of me, which is nice. Um, But I hope that we do see more relaxation stations like we had at Cultivate and at different conferences, because I I do think that's, that's really important. But um, Faith, this has been amazing. You have shared so many nuggets of information. You've been willing to be vulnerable and personal in which I honor you and say thank you, because there's not you know, I don't think there's enough of us that are having these conversations. I love that you said at National University Fundraising Academy really has this culture of showing up with your whole self as your whole self, right? So that you can be the best version of you um, really at, at all times. That is not how I started my career, right? I was really taught that you leave life, you leave personal life, you know, at home and you are just that business kind of a persona during that eight to five, nine to five hours. So I love hearing that this is baked into the culture um, at Fundraising Academy, National University, but I'm not surprised. So thank you for sharing all of this. Thanks so much for having me. This has been a great conversation, Jared. I love learning more about you. <laughs> Well, next time over Boba, I will come to San Diego and we will, we will go again. But before we close out today's conversation, Faith, where uh, can people find out more about National University Fundraising Academy? And perhaps if they want to connect with you directly, where do we find you? 
Yes. So we are on all the socials at Cause Dowling ED. Um, and then we also have our website, fundraising-academy.org, um, as well as our online learning portal, which is a great resource that you can find more education tools and resources. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, um, so you can definitely find me there, Faith Martin. Um, and yeah, so give us a follow, look into our work. We have a lot of knowledge to share for sure. Lots of knowledge, lots of resources. Okay. Final words of wisdom. Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice that you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a big question. I would just say, take care of yourself, <laughs> check in with yourself, stay passionate about your work and um, what you do every day and care about the people around you. That's it. Perfectly said. Yeah. Thank you, Faith. And thanks to all of you for listening. Um, I've gotten so much information out of this, very helpful and useful. So thank you. I appreciate you joining. Thanks, Jared.